Hi everyone, this is Mary Blue Angel back with another part of Thorn for the Villain. I was reincarnated as an extra in an Atome game. I think I got that right. Um, but yes, welcome. I am back again with Thorn for the Villain, this wonderful uh, visual novel demo um, that's a in that's an entry for Atome Jam 2023. Um, yeah, last time. The main character, one of the main points is that the main character um, went to go see the under, like the underground, oh my gosh, what they're called, they're like snares or something. The people who kind of work in the backgrounds to, um, you know, complete people's goals that commission them. So the main character commissioned them to take down slash expose this duke, um, who uh, would have been a prominent character in the original storyline of this uh, Atome game um, that the main character has been reincarnated into. Um, so in efforts to um, survive and so that the kingdom uh, in this Atome game will not fall and the main character will have a nice, sweet, safe, happy, happily ever after. Um, and so currently we are at a ball with our best friend Estella and Henry, and this is the Crown Prince. Crown Prince looks cool. I like I like the I like the black hair with like the kind of like the like bluish greenish highlights. I think those are just like light reflecting, but looks looks fantastical. Um, but okay. Um. I don't even know if I just made sense right now, but please, you know, if you don't know what just happened before this, please go look at the other part um, that I have, the first part of this series, so um, for the demo. Um, so yeah, let's just dive into it. My head turned to the crown prince. Our new royal advisor, Count Bernard von Ambrose. Is that my father in this game? Because I'm a von Ambrose. The noble guests in the room started clapping when they heard the name. A middle-aged man started walking f up front and knelt in front of the crown prince. Uh, say, what? Quite gutsy of your father to allow your attendance here when he has this special inauguration. Okay, so that's different. Oh, well, she whispered. Whisper, whisper. I shook my head. Ho hold up! Father! Were you not informed? No? Oh. Were you? Were you? Well. Now then, for the new captain of my personal knight order, the heir of the Valcourt Duchy from the north, Henry Valcourt. Oh, so Henry's going to be the new captain. Okay. Oh, I have to go. Hi, Henry. With that, we walk up to the front as well. Isn't it wonderful, though? Your father will become the royal advisor, and our Henry is the prince's knight captain. It, yeah, yeah. I look a lot worried. I knew Henry was going to be the knight captain, but wait. Wait! Father? As royal advisor? But... And then there's our Eric. He was appointed as... For my personal secretary. My aide. My... Oh, my aide. For my personal secretary. My aide. Heir of Ambr Ambrose. Eric von Ambrose. My brother! <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. The prince's personal secretary. I'm quite blessed to have friends in high places. And you, dear, I imagine shall become quite sought after. That is true. <laughs> My headspace. Just smile. <laughs> I'm Chantal Von Ambrose. I'm just an extra who was only mentioned once or twice in the game. My brother is Eric Von Ambrose, one of the possible love interests of the story, as well as the overworked secretary of the Crown Prince. But now, my father was appointed as royal advisor. 
Was this why that old man's been pretty quiet lately? Huh. Now that I'm the sister of the soon-to-be king's personal aide, and the daughter of the soon-to-be royal advisor, bootlickers will be flocking to us. And, of course, people who'd want connections. Which means, engagement proposal offers will also follow. Shit. Those will be the worst kind of proposals. That's true. I'd rather not get involved with the crown prince. I took a deep breath. Okay. Maybe it won't be too bad, right? Yeah. It's just Eric and the old man. I certainly am not involved with this. <laughs> not the prince coming to talk to me. Ah. Oh. You are the new advisor's daughter, aren't you? H hello Too soon! Spoke too soon! <laughs> you really do look alike. Oh, we do! Hi, brother! Of course. <laughs> I want to be nice. What's the... I don't know what the brotherly voice would be. Of course. While rare, it is possible for a male and female twin to look alike, your highness. We're... Oh, I thought you were my older brother, but... Okay, I, I love that we're twins. We're so cute! Look at my... Look at... Look at little... My twin brother. You explained it like we're in a documentary. Oh, ho! Huh. I seem to have heard curious rumors about the young lady. Isn't she the one known as... The infamous thorn among the flowers. <laughs> Bro, I can hear you. <laughs> I saw Eric twitching his eyebrows. He's telling me to keep it in. The crown prince is still his employer after all. Sorry, brother. No need to tell me, twerp. I'm keeping it in. I, I hope you do not listen to baseless rumors, your highness. My dear sister. He said dear while gritting his teeth. I sneered. <laughs> Is simply shy. Wow, what an excuse. She isn't well accustomed with social gatherings. Uh-huh. Why, she's been keeping herself next to her closest friends. And even though she's already of age, she has not been accepting engagement prospects. Why that little... I'd be so mad. He was basically saying that I'm incapable of finding myself a fiancé. I'll have you know, I'm single by choice. Exactly. Your sister is not yet engaged. What an interesting woman. What are those eyes there? I shuddered. Interesting. No thanks. I'm allergic to that word. Well then, your highness, we still have others to greet. I'm quite certain that my dear sister wouldn't want to keep you here. <laughs> Just smile. Smile and wave, girl. Like the Madagascar penguins. It was a pleasure meeting you, sire. I curtsied. It wasn't the most graceful, but I'm trying, okay? Very well. It was a pleasure to know you too, Lady Von Ambrose. We'll be seeing each other more frequently. Please. No. I'm trying to survive this game. He took my hand and gave it a peck. Okay, you have societal etiquette. Now then. And he finally left with Eric. Goodbye! Eric, that little shit. <laughs> oh, well, he did try to cover for me. I guess I'll treat him sometime. Hmm. <sighs> I just want to go home, pop a beer, and play a tome. Is that too much to ask? Whatever happened... That you look as though someone died. A stellar return carrying a glass of wine in each hand. Hey, where were you? 
No, actually, I guess it's better that she didn't cross paths with the prince. Nice timing, Estella. The crown prince came by with Eric to greet me. It was nerve-wracking. How about you? You suddenly disappeared on me. I saw some familiar faces and greeted them. And of course, being the wonderful friend that I am, I got you a drink. She handed me one of the glasses she was holding. Y you have other friends? Naturally. Even Henry has his own peers outside of our little group. She pointed over to the man, himself, who was currently surrounded by other noblemen. Though the indifference on his face was very telling. Granted, I don't think he enjoys their company very much. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. You two are the only ones I need. I took a sip from my glass. Ah, oh, man. That hit the spot. Goodness, I'm not sure if I should worry about you or find that absolutely adorable. I plead the latter. Isn't it better to have two real friends than be surrounded by a bunch of fake smiling faces? I agree. Oh, you. Excuse me, Lady Von Ambrose. I'm assuming, I'm assuming the suitors are coming. I turn around to the unfamiliar voice from behind us. Oh, he's... I mean, n not not my type. I don't know, good looking, sure. He's quite handsome. I mean, sure. For someone, for some reason, he's squinting heavily. But still, quite handsome. Come on, let me see your eyes for my full evaluation. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> Stella knows. I hope I'm not intruding. Okay. Um, I thought there was supposed to be voice acting for this character. I'm not sure, but I will just keep going until it goes in. But my setting is for voice on and turned all the way up, so I don't know why it's not going. Well, you kind of are, but do go on. Ugh. I recognize that look on her face. She's cooking something in her head. I just know it. She's scheming. I love a good scheme. When it comes to the romantic interests, I do love a good scheme. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. He placed a hand to his chest and bowed to the both of us. I'm Vicen Vincen Vicenzo? Vicenzo. Count of Brillhart. But you may call me... <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I'm Vincenzo, Count of Brillhart, but you may call me Vin Vincenzo. Sorry, I want to say Vincenzo. Oh, Count Brillhart, owner of the Northern Mines? Estella's eyes are like, <laughs> shocked. <laughs> yes, I, it seems you are quite well informed. And I believe you are the infamous lady, Estella Rolfs. I don't know about infamous, but you are correct. Northern Mines. Northern Mines. Ah, I think my old man has mentioned that before. I vaguely remember the old coot raving about a newly discovered diamond mine in the north. I wasn't really paying attention, but I think he mentioned that the owner maintained a stance on neutrality. Meaning that they never involved themselves with any of the political disputes or factions. No one opposes them, nor do they al ally with anyone. Or al ally, maybe. Basically, you can equate them to the invisible student in class. A family with no presence. A diamond mine is a big deal. I'm surprised his name isn't widespread, despite that. So, Count Brillhart, yes? Vicenzo, if you please. Right, Count Vicenzo. Do you need anything? This is a ball after all, so I was simply hoping to have this dance. I looked around. Wait. With me? <laughs> Why, yes. I hope I did not mistake your name. Huh? Huh? Maybe he saw me talking with the crown prince earlier? 
I briefly looked over at the man we were talking about. He was greeting other guests. Or was it because of my father and brother? The power of influence is scary. Oh my dear Chantel, I'll be fine over here. Estella is giving those eyes. She's like, I know what's about to happen. You need to go dance. What a bestie. Why don't you head along with the poor gentleman? He's waiting for your answer. A single dance wouldn't hurt. Estella gracefully took away the glass from my hand and walked off. I knew it. I was right about that face of hers. I turned to Brillhart. Fine. It's just a dance anyway. I hadn't practiced for so long, but I think I should still remember the steps. I haven't been asked for so long either, since everyone seems to be too scared to come near me these days. In the end, I nodded and put on my business smile. Thank you for the invite, Count Vicen Vicenzo. Sparkle, sparkle. I offered my hand. The pleasure is mine. Then he took mine in his. We were by the buffet table at the corner, so we joined everyone who were dancing at the center of the ball. First, we bowed to each other. I held up the hem of my dress and extended my right foot behind my left. I kept my back straight, at least tried to. Gods, I hated these lessons. It's not like he'd be able to see if I did it right since his head was also lowered. Oh, hello. Close up. A little CG! I was dancing. After bowing, I allowed him to take my hand. For the first time, I managed to catch a glimpse of his eyes. Oh, okay, I like the color. They're nice. They reminded me of pink sapphires. In this world filled with multicolored... Multicolor-eyed people, this was the first time I've seen eyes like his. He pulled me in while I took my other hand over to his shoulder. The music was already going when we participated on the dance floor. So far, so good. I haven't stepped on his toes yet. Apologies if I'm not quite the add-up dancer. <laughs> <laughs> so the voice acting is working. No worries, you're doing good. I'd feel more awkward if he turned out to be really good, and I'd have to keep up. Or, well, I guess he'd be taking the full lead. But I prefer this. It feels more like we're on equal footing. Why did you choose to invite me anyway? You must be aware of my reputation. Unless you live under a... Or a... a <laughs> right. Language. Language. Unless you aren't well informed. <laughs> Good, smooth. I figured I might as well ask. It's not like anyone else can hear us while we're doing this. Hmm. I didn't expect you to ask first. Mm-hmm. He hummed. The music reached its crescendo when the Count placed a hand on my back and supported me into a gentle descent. A little dip? Slowly the man pulled me back up, and in a low whisper, next to my ear, he spoke the words. I know that you possess blessings. That's very ominous, okay. Ah! Uh, I felt a shiver run down my spine. How could he possibly know that? Only the temple can verify if someone held a blessing. I had the urge to run away from him, but we're in the middle of a dance. Shit. Did I fall into a trap? No. I've fallen into his trap. Don't be afraid. I simply wish to talk. I'm scared. I'm scared. This voice acting is so good, but also I'm scared. He spoke in a hushed voice as he pulled me closer. Meet me in the garden after this. Should I have said you're not handsome? <laughs> Do not bring anyone with you. I'm sure you must at least have a good sense of how these things work. Uh-huh. I don't know. Time seemed to drag on, and just as those words left his lips, the Count made his bow. I hadn't realized that the music had ended. I'll be expecting you. 
I'm scared. With that, he made his exit. I stood still for who knows how long before I finally came to. Chantal, dear, the next song is about to start. Estella's voice called me back. The Count has already left. You do realize. You must be absolutely smitten. I don't think that's the case. Chantal, you look pale. Did he do something inappropriate? Oh, bestie. Henry bestie. I mean, he kind of did, but not in the, probably the way you're thinking about. He did. I feel like he's threatening my life. Very inappropriate, very not great, but um, he didn't do anything I feel like you're probably thinking of. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry. Uh, are you all right? Aw, Estella Bestie, I know you always got my back. You just were, you were into the scheme, I know. I understand. But you are checking on me now, so that's, I love that. I love my two besties, Estella and Henry. Estella took both of my hands into hers. Oh dear, you're, you're so cold. That little shall- Oh, I thought it was Estella. Shall I cut him down? Oh, look at besties. Look at them being so bestie. Like, they just care so much. <laughs> I love their friendship so much. They're too cute. I'm crying. It was too cute. Both of them went from worried to seething. Hold up. Please don't add to my worries. Oh, well, wait. Stop it, you two. Suddenly, I'm more anxious about what these two would do. I pulled them both to the side so that we can clear away from the dance floor. Uh, I'm fine. See? I busted out my best business smile. Don't you think they would see past your business smile? I was just shocked, okay? The look on their faces tell me that their anger had somewhat dissipated, but they were still concerned for me. Jeez, these two. Hmm, then what could he have done to make the wi wildest noble lady of Esmodia Kingdom so listless? I frowned at Henry's comment. That's something I'd expect to hear from Miss Stella. Not you, Henry. I uh, I wouldn't deny that. But enough of us. Do tell. What did the Count say that had you turn... That ha... What did the Count say to you that had turned our little links into a house cat? Oh, now I'm a feline? He said he wanted to meet me in the garden. Um, alone. The two looked at each other, and then back to me. Oh, 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 oh. it seems someone is smitten with our kitten. That <laughs> still is all the rhymes. Now you keep sticking me? Now you're sticking with keeping me a cat? I guess that's fine. It's cute. Alone. That sounds rather suspicious. Oh, oh, Henry, Henry, you simply do not understand the ways of romance. You're the one to talk. <laughs> You're the one to talk. Spoke the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Enough chatter. Isn't Count Brillhart waiting outside? You should head on out now. Don't keep him waiting. For all we know, he might be the one for you. <laughs> If only you knew that this guy is about to get my throat. Maybe. If he tries to pull anything, just scream and I'll get there in an instant. Thanks, Henry. Thanks? Words of assurance from the future Duke of the North sure is more than encouraging. But no spilling blood tonight. Please. F fine. I'll go now. Sending myself to death, I guess. I started walking my way there. Tell us how it goes. Acela called out one more time before I left. I didn't look back. Why even am I complying? This kind of scenario usually leads to a bad end. 
Maybe, maybe Count Brillhart wants to, like, evilly scheme? Then again, he did say that he just wanted to talk. Maybe I'm just overthinking this. Besides, Henry did give his word to back me up. Huh. I can also try to pretend that I went, but didn't see him. Should I go with that? Um, uh, let's just meet up. You know what? Let's just, let's just go. No, I should go. I don't know how he knew about my blessings, and he didn't seem to be affiliated with the temple. It's not a crime to hide your blessing either, so I'm not breaking any laws. I already risked meeting with Snare just to prevent the story from starting. This couldn't possibly be any more dangerous, right? If anything, I'm quite sure that he should be... I steeled myself for the meeting with the Brillhart dude. If it's that, there should be nothing for me to worry about. Was what I told myself as I went straight for the center of the garden. When I finally made my final turn by the grass hedge, there I saw Count Brillhart illum illuminated by the moonlight. He probably heard my step when the leaf underneath my shoe made a soft crunch. Oh. I'm glad you can acquiesce to my unreasonable request. The Count turned to my direction. At least you're self-aware. Man, I can hear my heartbeat. Okay, time to bust out my gaming face. It's not like I actually had a choice, did I? <laughs> you're quite blunt, aren't you? His manner of speaking now felt different from when we were inside the ballroom. Before, there was a hint of shyness to his voice, but now all of that disappeared. Actually, he feels more outgoing, if anything. Enough dilly-dally, just get to the point. You're with the snare. You're with snare, aren't you? Hmm. Whatever brought you to that conclusion? I'd be blind not to figure that out. They're the only ones with the capability for that kind of information gathering. Furthermore, I've had my blessings awakened since birth. Yet, this only happened after I'd made my contact and finished my transaction with Snare. Obviously, I'd make the connection. Lastly, you just admitted it right now. You didn't even ask what Snare is. Oh? <laughs> you caught it. Huh. Caught? Does that mean he dropped that on purpose? You're as amusing as I've been told. Uh-huh. Uh. Oh, God. There it is. He said it. That cursed word. Amusing. I shuddered. I was called interesting earlier. Now I'm being called amusing and a week ago that snare agent also called me funny granted that worked in my favor and i don't think he counts what's next you're not like other girls <laughs> it is annoying but yep why do these flags keep getting raised i'm just an extra here you're looking a little pale don't mind me, just continue. Who do you think is the cause? Hmm, is that so? Well then, as I was saying, the nature of your quest was truly an enigma. You have never had any interaction, nor connection, with Duke Peddleton. In fact, your only known acquaintances are the Lady of Roths and the heir of Valcourt, and among your relatives, you are particularly close to your own brother, while being estranged with your father. While you may have relatives who have access to the Duke, we were unable to uncover any form of direct contact between you and them. Other than your notoriety for trouble and mischief, we've come up with no results as to how you could have possibly caught wind of the target's secret dealings, nor of how you've learned about us in the first place. Of course they're investigating me because of my request. 
I suppose I expected this to some extent. So, what do you... Given all the information we've gathered, the only conclusion we could draw from this is that you have a type of blessing that could discern certain truths. Am I correct? Huh. I didn't expect them to be able to conclude as much. You could say that they're right on the money. My blessing was the blessing of rebirth. It's really just a fancy term for a reincarnator. I don't have to answer any of that, but I'd rather not have them find out about my reincarnator status. Huh. Real heart went quiet. Yes, that's fine. That was all I needed to say. And then he smiled. I feel goosebumps. Well then, it's been nice talking to you, Lady Von Ambrose. I enjoyed our dance. We'll see each other again soon. I'd rather not. He bowed his head as a gesture, as a gesture before walking away. So, did he really just want confirmation? Huh. No, no we snare, they're more sinister than that. Huh. Huh. Please tell me. Don't tell me Snare's interest fell on me rather than Estella. No way. Right? I mean, it's very possible. Huh. I spoke too soon. Oh. I was surprised when I received a letter for you from you a few days ago. It was quite straightforward. Compared to the others wishing to see my daughter, that is. <laughs> well, I don't do well with being roundabout, says the member of an underground intel broker. Beside me sat Eric, and at the other sofa was my old man and Count Brillhart next to each other. This is such a weird sitting arrangement. The old man should be on our side, too. But I guess he wants to get cushy with the Count. That said... We started receiving a ton of letters ever since my old man and brother were appointed as the future king's advisor and secretary. Invitations to parties, teas, charities, from nobles we've barely ever interacted with in the past. Of course they'd want the spicy new connection from a formerly fairly unknown, unaffiliated noble family. They'd probably think it'd be easy to take advantage of us. Cause they're right. Eric has been ranting to me about how the old man had booked him with way too many appointments. But me? As much as he would like to use me to further our connections, let's just say he's using me for an opportunity where I only need to exist. Like using me as a pawn for political marriage. Huh. Hmm. Then would you mind telling me how you met my daughter? I just smiled over at my own corner. We met at the ball of the crown prince. The moment I laid my eyes upon her, it was as if my time suddenly came to a halt. I think it was love at first sight. <laughs> Count von Ambrose sent the two of us a warning glare. We're funny as siblings. Old man, why once? Please, don't fall for this BS. Love at first sight my ass. Ahem. <clears throat> well, then, you haven't known each other for that long in that case. This is an understatement. We literally met once. Are you certain that you want my daughter's hand? Oh my god, you're asking for my hand? Already? More like my neck. I maintained my false smile. As much trouble I may cause, I'd rather not act up in front of my father. He does fund my living expenses. Instead, I brush my elbow against Eric. I felt him twitch, so he caught my sign for help. He let out a soft huff. By, by all due respect, Count Brillhart. That's Count Vicenzo, please. He corrected. What's him? What's with him and his name? Ah. Apologies, Count Vicenzo. As I was saying, I understand that you're smitten with my dear sister. However, it is embarrassing to admit, but she has quite a troubling reputation. Ugh. The old man remained silent. 
His displeasure with Eric's comment was evident, but he refrained from shutting down Eric since that would have been even more impolite to the guest. I hope that you have put that into your consideration with your proposal. Vincenzo only perked up on those flowers. Yes, in fact, I have heard. Far before we've met, thorn among the roses, yes? I could see the old man going a little pale when he heard that title. Man's really trying to sell off his daughter without the disclaimer. However, now that I have met Lady Chantel, I could tell that she's a far cry from those unsavory rumors. The Chantel I know isn't some rough and untamed woman, but rather a timid, delicate, and amusing young lady. Stop. I hate <laughs> Did he have to really emphasize amusing? I don't think he did. Ew. Shut it. If anything, I wish to know Lady Chantel better within my own terms, if you would allow. The old man remained silent for a bit, as if he was mulling, mulling his decision. Come on, father. Make the right decision for once. <clears throat> Very well. I improve of your engagement. You suck! I agree. The house of Brillhart has an untarnished reputation. Unremarkable, too. Like the one being proposed to. He muttered. I elbowed him. I believe that you are trustworthy enough to t I believe that you are trustworthy enough to take care of my precious daughter. <laughs> huh? I mean, I kind of want to be object- like, well, I'm just going to be objection- what? Uh, who cares? Objection! I slammed our table, stood from my seat, and outstretched my hand to point at my old man. Everyone was brought to a stunned silence. Don't I get a say in this? Chantal, quiet now, and sit down right this instant. <laughs> A uh, rose among thorns, or a thorn among rose. I don't know. I'd rather just continue my reputation. I'd rather keep my mouth shut if that avoid getting into trouble with the old man. But this one? This one, I can't let it slide. Hell, get me engaged to a villain. He'll let me get engaged to a villain. I'd go for it if I were playing as someone else, but I'm playing as myself here. No, no, it's fine. Why don't we allow Lady Chantal to speak her mind? Huh? Is he actually helping me? Uh... That expression! This guy. That bastard just wants me to see you do something interesting. <laughs> what am I? A circus monkey? Just smile. Maintain that damn smile. Well, fine. I'll let him have just that. Father, I'm sure that the Count, good Count, must be a wonderful man. However, I only wish to marry for love. <laughs> he covered his mouth as if he was about to hurl. Bro, you suck. Chantal, how could you be, how could you be so rude to the Count? Apologize right this instant. Oh dear, Count Von Ambrose, sir. Please, I am in no way offended, so I implore you not to take it against Lady Chantel. I understand her sentiment. Why, am I not appealing for love as well? Certainly, I wouldn't be happy if there will be no mutual consent to this relationship. Ugh. Thank you for understanding, then. My daughter is very fortunate. I rolled my eyes. Brillhart leaned closer to my father and started speaking in hushed tones. It's like they're the only ones talking here. Ugh. Not to judge, but your fiancé definitely smells like a two-faced fox. He whispered to me in turn. Oh, you don't know the half of it. And he's not my fiancé. I hissed, kicking his foot under the table. A clap echoed through the room, jolting us both to attention. How about this? Uh, how about this? The old man remained silent. I guess this is what he and Brillhart had talked about while me and Eric were whispering. Let's make our engagement a trial run. Let's say one month. 
If Lady Chantal still refuses after the time limit expires, we can break it off. I'll give up on my pursuit. Is that agreeable enough? Eric whistled softly. Again, I kick him. Stop that, you hag. I ignored him. But why is he doing this? Knowing Stare, Snare, they'd be much harsher. This is an organization that could take down a duke without repercussions. In fact, why are they even giving me this choice? He's suspiciously, suspiciously being over lenient with me. It's really strange. Maybe it would be better to agree for now rather than let this ex escalate to something worse. <sighs> um. Do we have to date? Like, can't we just court? Like, I don't need to be engaged to you. I don't know what the right thing to do is here. Because at the end of it, if you just... Unless this is just giving Vincenzo enough time to, like, assassinate me or whatever. I don't... I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um... I just want... I'm quite curious. Uh, I'm, like, half curious to see continue to object but also accept the proposal. This is such a hard decision. Okay. Um, I'm gonna leave it for right now because I'm ready at the end of this video. So I'm going... Oh, actually, I don't know. I don't even know if I can leave it. I don't... I don't think I can, like, save. I guess I'll accept the proposal and see how that is you want to save and I'm going to end it here thank you so much for watching hopefully you are enjoying this demo as much as I am it's very crazy it's very fun um characters are so great I love the main character she's so fun um really trying to survive as an extra in this Atoma game um so I guess also, I'm now thinking if I accept the proposal, which I have already, maybe this will keep other people off my back for a month. Who knows? So that's another plus to this. But okay, I'm going to go. I'll be back soon with another part and hope you join me next time. Bye.